Happy holidays and welcome to another episode of the Assembly Lines podcast. I'm your host, Chris Torrance. And today we're going to take a look at the Ultra Warp Accelerator card for the Apple II line of computers from Reactive Micro. So let's get started. Here is the Ultra Warp, and this is version 1.91 RM, and the RM stands for Reactive Micro. So the Ultra Warp is a accelerator card that was designed by Michael Mengel, and it's designed to work in any Apple II, um, except for the 2C. So it'll work in an original Apple II, a 2 Plus 2E, Enhanced 2E, or a, any of the clones. I won't work in the 2GS. So here's all the components. You can see here's the board itself. Uh, it looks very clean. Uh, it's got a nice layout. And then here are all the chips to go into it. You can clearly see I have my work cut out for me. Uh, there's quite a few chips. And if we flip this over, there's all the sockets that need to get soldered in to put the chips in. So let's go ahead and we'll just start soldering in the sockets and then we can try it out. At this point, I'm about halfway done with assembly. Uh, you can see I still have quite a few dip sockets left to go. Just a couple of quick pointers. So make sure when you're putting in the sockets that you always have the notch to the left. Otherwise, you'll have to resolder the whole thing. Actually, you wouldn't have to, but it just makes it safer when you put in the chips at the end just to make sure that you have the notch lined up with the notch on the board. Other things to note, uh, when I was soldering these two sockets right here, um, I accidentally, I, I was soldering this one, I didn't have this socket in yet, and I just kept going and just completely covered up one of the holes uh, with solder without having the socket in there. And so that was a pain because then I had to carefully put this socket in while at the same time reheating that hole so that the pin would shove through. Uh, so just be careful when you're soldering to make sure that you have the socket in when you're actually doing the soldering. Here's the completed Ultra Warp board. So the installation was pretty straightforward, although it's a heck of a lot of soldering. If you're a newbie to soldering, this would definitely uh, give you a lot of experience and by the time you're done with it, you'd be an expert. One thing to keep in mind when you're putting in the chips, make sure to press them down very firmly. Uh, you might think that they're in, but typically you can actually press them down a little bit harder and they'll actually seat themselves more properly. And before putting in any of the chips, you want to make sure to bend the legs uh, just so they're straight up and down because when they come uh, from the factory, they're usually bent outward a little bit and it'll just make them harder to get in. So let's take a look at the board itself and see how it works. So the design is really elegant. It doesn't use any sort of programmable chips or ROM or anything. It's just all done with straight TTL and a in the middle here you can see there's a Western Design Center 65C816. This is the same chip that's used in the Apple II GS. And over on the left here, this is a 120K SRAM. And what this does is it basically, it's driven by the oscillator over here. So this is the 13 megahertz oscillator. And it's essentially mirroring your entire Apple II. So it's taking all the memory, dumping it into the 128K SRAM. So that's the 64K uh, plus the 64K auxiliary. And then it's essentially just running all of these same instructions that your Apple II would run, but on the on the 65C816. And this can be driven up to 14 megahertz, which is where you can get the extra speed. So there's a couple indicator lights. One is for power. Another one when there's disk access. The card will automatically slow down for a disk two analog card in slot six. If you have another card, say another disk two card or some sort of other uh, disk access card in slot five or seven, then you're gonna wanna set one of these dip switches. And the manual tells you how to set these dip switches to indicate that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in slot one. Uh, you can actually put it in any slot that you want. Uh, this one just happens to be free. And now we'll turn it on. All right, well, that's good. We got the beep. Uh, there's a light on on the card. It's blinking for disk access and it's loading up the game. You can see that doesn't look any faster. Um, whoa, 
All right, so that is clearly extremely fast. And so that looks like the card is working. Uh, we could do some more speed timing tests just to make sure, uh, but that is significantly faster. Now we're gonna go ahead and run the speed test disk that is available on the Reactive Micro Wiki page. And this will give us a better indication of whether we're truly getting 13 megahertz. So we'll start up the program here. And this will just run a variety of tests. We're only gonna just do one. Uh, there's more detailed results on Henry Corbis's website. So let's just begin the test. All right, I have to time this now with a timer. As soon as I hit the key, then I start the clock. Okay, so we got a total of 9.58 seconds. Let's check compatibility with the Apple II Plus now. So I've got it in slot one of my Apple II Plus, and we're booting up Karateka and see how that works. All right, so you can see that some stuff is really fast, but other stuff is slow. So anytime that the card has to access ROM, so the system firmware, AppleSoft Basic, the monitor, etc., uh, that actually is going to run at normal speed. But for anything else that's actually in memory, so just like a program, then it runs faster. So let's go ahead and we'll try and play it. Overall impressions of the Ultra Warp card. Uh, it's an excellent kit. It was easy to put together. I didn't really need any instructions at all. There's a heck of a lot of soldering, so be prepared for that. Uh, the card worked flawlessly on both my Apple IIe and my Apple II Plus. Uh, I can easily see using this card for things like assembling uh, code, uh, perhaps doing things like spreadsheets where you need a lot of number crunching. Uh, you probably wouldn't want to really use it for too many games. Uh, unless it was perhaps like a kind of a turn-based game where the computer was really slow. Uh, obviously for action games, it's not gonna be too helpful. So Henry Corbus is developing a controllable oscillator and this is gonna replace the 13 megahertz oscillator chip and allow you to actually dial the speed. And I can't wait for that because then I'll actually probably install it in my regular workaday Apple IIe uh, so I can dial it down to one megahertz for games and then up to 13 megahertz uh, for doing things like assembly. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you're interested in speeding up your Apple II Plus or IIe or just straight Apple II, I definitely recommend the Ultra Warp card from Reactive Micro and I'll have some links in the show notes on how you can get one. So thanks for watching.